another tool in the offing uh, essentially determinants is the objective now <coughs> just to give you a small background but we will not uh, dig too much into the background but just to tell you how it all got started suppose you had one linear equation of this kind a1x plus b1 equal to 0 and another linear equation a2x plus b2 equal to 0 hmm? now if both the equations are talking of the same x if both these equations are talking of the same x then we say that they are consistent that means the value of x obtained from this must be the same as the value of x obtained from this that's when we call them consistent <coughs> now the value of x obtained from this is minus b1 by a1 the value of x obtained from this is minus b2 by a2 and the two must be equal for consistency that means we if this equal to this it would give me a1 b2 minus a2 b1 equal to 0 this is what it's going to give me equating these two would give me a1 b2 minus a2 b1 equal to 0 now this expression a1 b2 minus a2 b1 is written in a certain format the format for writing this expression is is the format the mathematical format for writing this expression which is a1 b2 minus b2 a1 which is like this into this minus this into this this is what it means this into this minus this into this now this has two rows row one and row two and it has two columns right it has two rows and two columns so we call this a determinant of order two we refer to this expression as a determinant of order two This is referred to as a determinant of order 2. We also call it a 2 by 2 determinant. 2 rows and 2 columns. A 2 by 2 determinant is what we refer to this as. Hmm? B1, A2. So sorry. <coughs> a1 b2 minus a2 b1 yeah. so just stand corrected this is a1 b2 minus a2 b1 actually i was talking of this expression only <coughs> so this is a determinant of order 2 a 2 by 2 determinant a 2 by 2 determinant <coughs> now an extension of this notation an extension of this right now i'm going to look upon this entire thing as a notation the properties and the algebra associated with that notation after we breed familiarity with the notation we will learn the practical implication of this notation all right but let me let me generalize matters here right so this is two rows two columns a set of elements two rows and two columns and they have a certain value the value of this is given by a1 b2 minus a2 b1 and this is referred to as a determinant of order 2 or a 2 by 2 determinant because it has two rows and two columns right Now, 
a determinant of order 3 Order 3 has 3 rows and 3 columns, has 3 rows and 3 columns. This is referred to as delta, it is a determinant of order 3. Now, we define two things for a determinant in general. One, for every element, for in this case there are nine elements here in this determinant, for every element we define what is called the minor of that element, minor of that element. Now, first of all every element is essentially of the form P i j in the sense every element here belongs to the ith row and the jth column. For example, P 1 1 is the element A 1. First row and first column is the element A. P 1 2 is the element of the first row and the second column that is B 1. P 3 2 third row and second column is B 3 and so on and so forth. So, an element Pij is an element that belongs to the ith row and the jth column. That is Pij. Hmm? Now, for every Pij, we define the minor of that Pij. <coughs> the minor of Pij is Mij. My, this is called the minor of the element belonging to the ith row and the jth column. We define the minor of that element belonging to the ith row and the jth column. Now, for example, m11 is the minor of the element belonging to the first row and the first column that is a1. What we do is, in order to obtain the minor of this, there is a row to which this element belongs, obliterate that row, forget that row. There is a column to which this belongs, forget that column forget that column. Now, that means hide the row and the column to which that element belongs. You are then left with these four elements. You are then left with four, these four elements. Now, these four elements would constitute a determinant of the following kind. B2, C2, B3, C3. That is the minor of 1, 1. Right? Now, suppose <coughs> that means minor of A1. Hmm? If I say what is the minor of 1, 2? Minor of 1, 2 means minor of B1. Minor of B1. I forget the row and the column to which B1 belongs. Then I am left with A2, C2 and A3, C3. So the determinant constituted out of A2, C2 and A3, C3 is this. The value of this is A2 C3 minus A3 C2. A3 C2. That is the minor of 1, 2. Right? Suppose I very clearly the minor of a, any element is independent of the elements belonging to the row or the column to which it belongs. Right? Similarly, if I have to compute the minor of 3, 1. That means minor of A3. Right? Minor of A3. So, I will forget this. I will forget this. Hmm? I am then left with B1, C1 and B2, C2. So, minor of 3, 1 is which is B1, C2 minus B2, C1. Yes or no? So, for every element here, by forgetting the row and the column to which that element belongs, I can obtain the minor of that element. Right? <coughs> now,
corresponding to a new collection of elements which are referred to as the minors of various elements belonging to that determinant we have another terminology which is called the cofactor cofactor now cofactor of any element belonging to the ith row and the jth column the cofactor of any element belonging to the ith row and the jth column cij is obtained as minus 1 to the power i plus j m i j that means for the element belonging to the ith row and the jth column that means a i j you can obtain the minor like i just discussed and multiply it with minus 1 to power i plus j these two suffixes then you get the cofactor of that element you get the cofactor of that element now so which means you know if i have a determinant like this <coughs> there can be a determinant constituted out of the cofactors of delta cofactors of delta i call it delta prime determinant of cofactors determinant of cofactors of delta determinant of cofactors of delta say this delta prime is say the cofactor of a1 is going to be what My, so so c11 that's the cofactor of a1 i'm going to look at this is minus 1 to power 1 plus 1 so minus 1 to power 1 plus 1 into the minor of this minor of this forget this row forget this column is going to be b2c3 minus b3c2 right What's going to be the cofactor? That means this is going to be, let's say, A1. C11 is A1. Then there is going to be a minor, there is going to be a cofactor of this, which is, say, B1. There is going to be a cofactor of this, say, capital C1, and so on and so forth. Cofactors of various elements. This is the determinant constituted out of cofactors of various elements of this delta, right? Now, <clears throat> having obtained, having obtained the cofactors of various elements, the value of this delta, which I have not yet told, the value of this delta. is going to be I can take this row for example a1 into cofactor of a1 plus b1 into cofactor of b1 c1 into cofactor of c1 that's the value of this delta that's the value of this delta which is essentially a1 now the sign associated with this is going to be minus 1 to power 1 plus 1 which is plus 1 into the determinant of the rest that means determinant of this b2 c3 minus b3 c2 now obviously when you move from one element to the next element between the two subscripts one will change so the sign will change if this was minus 1 squared, this would be minus 1 cubed, which would be minus 1. So, minus b1 into, now the, obtain, forget this row and this column, then you have a2c3 minus a3c2, a2c3 minus a3c2. Similarly, plus minus 1 to power 4 which is plus 1 so plus c1 into forget this column forget this row a2 b3 minus a3 b2 
that's the value of this determinant delta now what i want to suggest to you is that the value of delta obtained by taking elements of the first row a1 b1 c1 are elements of the first row and their corresponding cofactors this is what sum of the product of elements of the first row and their corresponding cofactors and their corresponding cofactors co that's the value of delta you can check that this would be the same as taking let's say the second row and the corresponding cofactors of the second row a2 a2 plus b2 b2 plus c2 c2 that is some of the products of elements of the second row into their corresponding cofactors will give you the same value will give you the same value or the third row <clears throat> now <clears throat> what i have done to the rows i could have also done to the columns that means i could have obtained the same value by taking let's say elements of the first column into their corresponding cofactors or elements of the second column into their corresponding cofactors or elements of the third column into their corresponding cofactors that means this would have been the same as for example taking the first column a1 into cofactor of a1 a2 corresponding cofactor a3 corresponding cofactor or i could have taken the second column which is <coughs> b1 b1 plus b2 b2 plus b3 b3 or i could have taken the third column c1 capital c1 c2 capital c2 c3 capital c3 it will give me the same value now <coughs> say for example obtaining the value of the determinant using the first row we use the first row a1 b1 c1 we say i have we say we have expanded the determinant using the first row or which will turn out to be the same as this this is expanding the determinant using the second row using the third row or using the first column or second column or third column so the determinant could be expanded using any row or any column right <coughs> now can i wipe this off right what really happens here is in this determinant delta whose value let's say this is expanding using the first row now no matter how you expand this using the first row or the third column or the second row or the third second column does not matter you get the same set of numbers but maybe arranged differently arranged differently now do you realize that the number of terms that appear here are three factorial six terms appear in the expansion of this determinant Three factorial or six terms appear in the expansion of this determinant, out of which three are positive and three are negative. Three come married to positive signs. Three come married to negative signs. For example, a one b two c three plus sign, right? Then a three b one c two plus sign or a two b three c one plus sign. these three are positive terms and the other three are negative terms so the other three are negative terms right <clears throat> now customarily what we do is 
realize that a1 b2 c3 this is the first term now elements belonging this way they are called diagonal elements a1 b2 and c3 are diagonal elements and the first term appearing in the expansion of this determinant is the diagonal element a1 b2 c3 a1 b2 c3 is the diagonal element we call this diagonal element as the pivot element or the leading element a1 b2 c3 is the leading term or the diagonal term leading term or the diagonal term a1 b2 c3 which is the first term which appears in the expansion of this determinant now any other term any other term can be obtained by a suitable transposition of these terms how it happens here is the six terms that appear here can be obtained as follows you know this for example is the leading term take the leading term as your reference term take the leading term as your reference term hmm? and write abc in their natural order abc in the natural order abc in the natural order hmm? and play around with these suffixes 1 2 3 2 1 3 3 2 1 right these suffixes can be placed here in three factorial ways these suffixes 1 2 3 can be placed here in three factorial ways giving me all six terms here right so all terms here are actually derived out of the leading term all terms here are derived out of the leading term by writing abc in the natural order and permuting these suffixes in all possible orders permuting these suffixes in all possible orders right so i play around with one two three two one three etc and like i said there are three factorial permutations of one two three giving me the six terms out of the leading term total number of terms are six now why are some terms positive and why are some terms negative what is the rule that helps us decide whether the sign associated with a certain term is going to be positive or it's going to be negative hmm. now for example let me look at a term like this a1 b3 c2 there is a minus sign attached to this right in contrast so there is a minus sign attached to this term in contrast let me look at a term like a3 b1 c2 a3 b1 c2 there is a plus sign attached to this term yes or no hmm? see a1 b3 c2 a1 b3 c2 comes with a minus sign and a3 b1 a3 b1 c2 that comes with a plus sign what's the difference between these two terms both are of course permutations of 1 2 3 different permutations of 1 2 3 but the difference is <coughs> say this is my reference term or the leading term this is my leading term And from this term to this term, say a1, b2, c3. I want to go from this term to this term. Hmm? a1, b3, c2. What happens here is, let me find out the number of transpositions. Number of transpositions that will help me go from suffixes 1 2 3 this is suffixes 1 2 3 to 1 3 2 hmm. so only one transposition see 3 2 comes here 2 3 this is a single transposition right single transposition 2 comes here 3 goes there so single transposition
isn't it from 1 2 3 to 1 3 2 a single transposition is required just this interchange is required yes or no hmm? now in contrast look at migration from a1 b2 c3 that means 1 2 3 right this is my reference term a1 b2 c3 1 2 3 to this term 3 1 2 let me look at the number of transpositions that will help me go from the leading term to this term. 3, 1, 2. Hmm? See, first of all, <coughs> I'll interchange 1 and 2. So that's one transposition. That will give me 2, 1, 3. Yes or no? That's one transposition. Isn't it? Hmm? I interchange 1 and 2. So I go to 2, 1, 3. Next, I interchange 2 and 3. Now if I interchange 2, one, 2 and 3, I get 3, 1, 2, which is the final form that I required. Yes or no? From 1, 2, 3 to 3, 1, 2, the number of transpositions required would be 1 and 1. 2 transposition. 2 transpositions. Yes or no? Hmm? So in this case, the number of transpositions was 1. In this case, the number of transpositions was 2. So, write down. <coughs> if the number of transpositions from the leading term to the required term, if the number of transpositions from the leading term to the required term is even, is even then the required term comes with a plus sign then the required term comes with a plus sign if the number of transpositions required is odd if the number of transpositions required is odd then the required term comes with a negative sign. Then the required term comes with a negative sign. That's the rule in general. Hmm. That's the rule in general. Now, <coughs> and this rule will apply not just to a determinant of order 3 as you see here it will apply to a determinant of any order in the sense <coughs> that you know I could have had a determinant of order n <coughs> say whose leading terms are a1 say a1 a2 an this is a leading term say for example right so whatever be the suffixes these 1 2 n would be permuted in various ways that's going to be n factorial ways giving me n factorial terms in the expansion of this and then from any other term from from the leading term to any other term if the number of transpositions required is even then that term will get tagged to a plus sign otherwise a minus sign right that's the rule hmm? No, that's that will work only for a 3 by 3 determinant. It will not work for a generalized determinant. So, for a 3 by 3 determinant, the cyclic order helps. But remember, this rule that cyclic order funda will be true only for a 3 by 3 determinant. Higher order determinants will fail to subscribe to this. So, in this case, for example, this determinant in principle is like summation of terms of this kind a1 b2 c3 this being the leading term that means I refer to this determinant as this and then you know terms of this kind with permutations of 1 2 3 coming with plus or minus sign so this is a, this is a simpler way of writing the entire determinant a1 b2 c3 I permute 1 2 and 3 maintaining a b c in their natural orders now <coughs> for a 3 by 3 determinant look at the leading term 1 2 3 hmm? And arrange 1, 2, 3 in a circle. Arrange 1, 2, 3 in a circle. Hmm? 
now what are the cyclic permutations of 1 2 3 right if i go clockwise how many clockwise permutations of 1 2 3 1 2 3 2 3 1 and 3 1 2 these are clockwise permutations of 1 2 3 all terms coming with this per these permutations in this expansion will be positive all terms with an anti clockwise permutation for example if there is a term 2 1 3 which is going opposite to the benchmark order 2 1 3 is opposite to the benchmark order this is the benchmark order this will come with a minus sign or 1 3 2 will come with a minus sign or 3 2 1 will come with a minus sign these are terms obtained by moving in the opposite sense 1 2 3 and 2 3 1 and 3 1 2 are in the same cyclic order say clockwise then all of this would be anti-clockwise so refer to this all terms appearing in the same cyclic order as 1 2 3 will be deemed positive opposite to 1 2 3 that means if this is clockwise then these are anti-clockwise then terms of such kind would be would come with their negative signs this is how it up but only for a 3 by 3 determinant it will not work for higher order determinants <coughs> now Make sense, right? <clears throat> Suppose Yeah, so now for example No, <laughs> in this case This is a determinant I have defined like this So this will be the leading term for this determinant You want to call it P1, P2, P3 Your choice no, no. Leading term is product of the diagonal members. No. Yes, only this way. Not this way. Now, one important thing that I want to tell you is that since the determinant could be expanded about any row or any column. For example, you know, it could, be ha it could have been expanded about the first row, so also about the first column. Which means, I could have made this the first column first row I could have made this the second row I could have made this the third row and the value of delta will remain the same for example you know I could have had a determinant in which the members here are transposed in the sense the rows become columns and the columns become rows then you have a determinant of this kind first column has become first row second column would become the second row third column will become the third row this also so the value of this determinant will be the same the value of this determinant will be the same by converting rows into columns or columns into rows the value of the determinant will not change <clears throat> now See, in this case also, the leading term is A1, B2, C3. So, various permutations of 1, 2, 3 will appear by arranging A, B, C in their natural order. So, this determinant is also written as A1, B2, C3. Essentially, the same thing. The same set of rules will apply. Now, <clears throat> let me create a determinant by interchanging say two rows now one thing that I must say at the very onset since it does not matter whether I am dealing with the determinant using a row or a column then whatever properties of the determinant I arrive at for rows the same property will apply for columns right now <coughs> see I have a determinant delta 1 obtained by interchanging any two rows for example any two rows for example let me say I interchange these two rows for example the first and the second row I interchange and I get a new determinant delta 1 
okay now what's the leading term for this determinant this determinant is written as a2 b1 c3 yes or no hmm? for this the clockwise arrangement was 1 2 3 and anything in the same order as 1 2 3 would be positive but opposite to 1 2 3 is going to be negative in contrast this is 2 1 3 so the clockwise for example i write as 2 1 3 so anything clockwise 2 1 3 1 3 2 3 2 1 that's all going to be positive but anything anti clockwise 1 2 3 2 3 1 3 1 2 is going to come with a negative sign right now <clears throat> for example in the expansion of this by writing suffixes in various orders there is going to be a term like a3 b1 c2 appearing right when i write this in an expanded form you would expect a term of this kind to appear a3 b1 c2 which is like 3 1 2 3 1 2 right and 3 1 2 is in the same order as 1 2 3 so this will come with a plus sign right again in the expansion of this there is going to be a term a3 b1 c2 coming right a3 b1 c2 right now this is the benchmark order here 3 1 2 3 1 2 is not in the same order as 2 1 3 3 1 2 you are going this way opposite to the natural order 2 1 3 of the leading term so if you are moving in a sense opposite to the natural order 2 1 3 of the leading term you are going 3 1 2 in the opposite sense then the sign attached to this term is going to be negative so that means essentially in the expansion of this and the expansion of this identical terms would appear except that every term that is positive here will be negative here every term that is negative here would be positive there yes or no that means the value of delta and the value of delta 1 would be the same in magnitude but opposite in signs yes or no <coughs> so delta and delta 1 would differ only in their signs so <coughs> i end up getting delta 1 equal to minus delta so the rule of the game is property number 1 if any two rows or columns if any two rows or columns of a determinant are interchanged the sign of the determinant changes if any two rows or columns of a determinant if any two rows or columns of a determinant are interchanged the sign of the determinant changes the sign of the determinant changes <coughs> hmm? now can i wipe this off right so if i place this column here and this column there then also it will become minus delta right if i interchange the first and the third rows it will become minus delta and so on so forth right for the same reason Now, there is a determinant delta in which, say, two rows are identical, in which two rows are identical, say, A1, B1, C1, A1, B1, C1, A1, B1, C1, A1, B1, C1, A3, B3, C3. Two rows are identical. right now if i interchange these two rows then the value of delta will become minus delta so if i interchange these two rows the new determinant will have minus delta if i interchange the first and the second row then the new determinant will have a value minus delta hey but the new determinant is the same as delta yes or no by interchanging these two rows you actually have the same determinant delta so delta then will be minus delta which means 2 delta will be 0 or delta will be 0. Yes or no? How many of you don't understand this? <clears throat> okay. This is delta. Right? 
Ayush, I interchange these two rows. So I get, if I interchange the two rows, then I get minus delta. So let me put this row here and let me put this row here. So I get a1, b1, c1, a1, b1, c1, <coughs> a3, b3, c3. Yes or no? Ayush? <laughs> but this is the same as this. So delta equal to minus delta, 2 delta is 0, delta is 0. So another rule, if any two rows of, any if any two rows or columns of a determinant are identical, if any two rows or columns of a determinant are identical, then the determinant must necessarily be 0. Then the determinant must necessarily be 0. <coughs> What? No, may not be identical, but you can carry out manipulation to make them identical. It is possible to do that. You know, what his his contention is that if a, if the value of a determinant turns out to be zero, then should the two rows of the determinant be identical? Maybe in the form in which they are presented, they may not look identical. But I can carry out manipulation to make them look identical. I can do that. Yeah, it's possible to do that. So if any two rows or columns of a determinant are identical, then the determinant must necessarily be 0. And whatever rules I am subscribing for a determinant of order 3 are the rules that apply to a determinant of any order, right? I mean, <coughs> so if I had a determinant like 2, 3, 4, 1, 6, 9 <coughs> and 2, 3, 4, what would be the value of this determinant? Obviously, 0. The first and the third rows are identical. So, you can close your eyes, open them and write 0. Right? Now, can I wipe this off? Are you all okay with this? Hmm? <coughs> now, one of the things that you could see readily Say if this is a determinant delta, a1, b1, c1, a2, b2, c2, a3, b3, c3, all right. This is the determinant. And say the determinant of cofactors. Say the determinant of cofactors is delta prime, the first row, say capital A1, capital B1, capital C1, this is the determinant of cofactors, by the way there is a name given to the determinant of cofactors, it's called the adjoint of the determinant or the educate of the determinant. Adjoint. It's called the adjoint of the original determinant or the adjugate. This determinant of cofactors is called the adjoint of delta, sometimes also called the adjugate of delta. <coughs> hmm. Now, if I change the members of the first row to say x, y, z, if I change the members of the first row to x, y, z, hmm, what would happen to the cofactors of the first row? What would happen to the cofactors of the first row? Hey, when we computed the cofactors of the first row, in that computation, the first row was not involved. Was not involved. Yes or no? In my attempt to compute the cofactors of the first row, various elements of the first row, no element, no member of the first row was involved. Yes or no? Right? So, cofactors of the first row will not depend on elements of the first row. Cofactors of the second row will not depend on members of the second row. That means if you tinker around with the members of the first row, the 
and maintaining the other two rows the same maintaining the other two rows the same then the cofactors of the first row will remain the same although the cofactors of the second and the third row will change but the cofactors of the first row will remain the same even if i change the elements of the first row and same with columns <coughs> right if capital b1 capital b2 capital b3 are members of the second column uh, uh, are cofactors of the second column and if i change the members of the second column right the cofactors of the second column will remain the same cofactors of the second column will remain the same yes or no hmm? okay now i create a new determinant say delta 1 i create a new determinant say delta 1 hmm? in which i change the members of the first row i obtain delta 1 from delta by changing members of the first row now the first row what i do is i make it the same as the second row this is a determinant delta 1 obtained from delta by simply changing the members of the first row the first row instead of being a1 b1 c1 are now a2 b2 c2 hmm? yes or no hmm? now what would be so this was the determinant of cofactors of delta what would be now the cofactor of this element a1 the cofactor of this will be a1 yes or no will be the same as the cofactors of this right the cofactor of b2 would be what b1 or rather b2 i'm sorry b1 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 what would be the cofactors of c2 c1, c1. yes or no please ask me if you don't understand this ask me this determinant is obtained by changing delta what have i changed in delta I have only changed the members of the first row. First row instead of being A1, B1, C1 is now A2, B2, C2. So if the cofactors of the first row were capital A1, capital B1, capital C1 in delta, then what would be the cofactors of the first row in delta 1? Same, no? Same, right? <clears throat> Which means now. So, so if I have to obtain the value of this determinant, what would I do? a2 a1 b2 b1 c2 c1 that will be the value of this determinant yes or no a2 a1 b2 b1 c2 c1 will be the value of this determinant yes or no but in this determinant the first two rows are identical the first two rows are identical that means delta 1 must be 0 now this leads us to something extremely important look go back to delta hmm? go back to delta a2 b2 c2 are elements of the second row in delta but a1 capital a1 capital b1 capital c1 are cofactors of the first row right so now in order to obtain delta what is it that i could have done a2 into capital a2 plus b2 into capital b2 plus c2 into capital c2 that means i take members of this row and the corresponding cofactors of that very row and find the sum of the product and that will be delta but in this expression members of the second row have been taken but cofactors of the first row right capital a1 capital b1 capital c1 are cofactors of the first row whereas a2 b2 c2 are members of the second row so members of the second row into cofactors of the first row some of the product of members of the second row cofactors of the first row corresponding cofactors of the first row that turns out to be zero which means i could have also taken the third row and cofactors of the second row or the first row that means a3 into say capital a1 plus b3 into capital b1 plus c3 into capital c1 that will also be zero or i could have taken 
members of the second column and found the cofactors of the first column and then I could have said B1 capital A1 plus B2 capital A2 plus B3 capital A3 that will also be 0. That means taking a given row but cofactors of some other row or taking a given column but cofactors of some other column the sum of the product will turn out to be 0. Yes or no? You know what I am saying? Hmm? Members of that row and the corresponding cofactors of that very row will give me delta. But members of a given row multiplied with corresponding cofactors of some other row will give me delta equal to 0. Will give me delta equal to 0. This is very important. Or members of a given column into corresponding cofactors of some other column will give me 0. It's important to know this. Right? Is there an issue? No? <coughs> Now, let me look at again a delta like this. This is delta. <coughs> and say the cofactors of the first row are A1, A2, A3. Are cofactors of the, I am sorry, A1, B1, C1. A1, capital B1, capital C1 is the cofactor of the first row. That means say, Delta prime, the determinant of the cofactors, that means a joint of delta is going to be A1, A2, hmm. now, <coughs> Let me look at another determinant, delta 1, whose first row is not A1, B1, C1, is something else. Say the first row is A1 plus alpha, B1 plus beta, C1 plus gamma and the other two rows are the same. These are the other two rows. That's delta 1. Hmm? Okay. Now can you tell me, what would be the cofactors of the first row of this? Same as the cofactors of the first row of this, because I have not tinkered with the second and the third rows. So if I have to expand the determinant, then I could have expanded about the first row and used these as my cofactors, right? So delta 1 could have been written as, delta 1 could have been written as, a1 plus alpha into capital A1, right? B1 plus beta into capital B1 capital C1. Yes or no? That's the value of this determinant which essentially is A1, A1 plus B1, B1 plus C1, C1, right? A1, A1 plus B1, B1 plus C1, C1 plus <coughs> alpha A1 plus beta B1 plus gamma C1. Yes or no? Yes or no? 
right? Hey, this is my original delta. A1, A1 plus B1, B1 plus C1, C1 is the original delta. So this is the same as A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3 plus <coughs> now alpha, beta, gamma. will turn out to be elements of the first row this is like expanding a certain determinant about alpha beta gamma the first row and the cofactors of the first row being a1 b1 and c1 that means the second and the third row must remain the same so that capital a1 capital b1 capital c1 are cofactors of the first row so the second and the third row are like a a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 or no right right so a1 plus alpha b1 plus beta c1 plus gamma could be broken down into two determinants a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 and then alpha beta gamma a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 yes or no ayush right and whatever i have said of a row i could have done for a column that means if i had say this determinant will be the same as a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 C three plus alpha B one C one beta B two C two C three and so on. Yes, on. Hmm. Also, realize another simple property. Can I wipe this off? say if i had members instead of a1 b1 c1 suppose i had a determinant delta 1 which is C three, something like this. Hmm? Evidently, evidently, <coughs> either by expansion or otherwise, realize that the cofactors of the first row of this will be the same as the cofactors of the first row of this because they have the they have identical second and third rows. So delta one could be written in terms of cofactors of a one b one c one is k a one into cofactor of a one which is Capital A one plus K B one into cofactor of B one, which is capital B one K S O N O, right? I could have expanded this using the first row, but the cofactors of the first row of this and the cofactors of the first row of this will remain the same because they have the same second and third rows, right? So this is like. K times <coughs> this delta one is like K times right, which you can see is K times this is delta right. This is delta. C three. 
that means k could be taken common from a given row k could be taken common from a given column or if i have three outside i could have multiplied that three with any row or with any column i'll get the same value of the determinant right now <coughs> then it will be k times a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 c1 c2 c3 huh same thing hmm. Hmm. that means instead of the row being k times if i had any column being k times the same k could have come out of the column and i'll get the same value of the determinant this k will find a thoroughfare with any row or any column It will not because anyways you know uh, a determinant remains unaltered by changing rows into columns and columns into rows so it doesn't matter right <coughs> now there are times you perform operations of this kind for example you know if i had a delta <coughs> which is if i had a determinant of this kind for example you know it could be broken down like i said into three determinants the first one this this and this the second one this this and this and the third one this this and this it could be broken down into three determinants for example hmm? so this is like <coughs> a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 <coughs> plus k times b1 k times b2 k times b3 <coughs> plus <coughs> k prime c1 k prime c2 from the sum rule that we just learnt a little while ago now obviously you know i could have taken k common from this if i took k common from this the first and the second column will become identical it will be zero i could have taken k prime i could have taken k prime common from this and the first column and the third column will become identical that means these two determinants will become zero right so if these two determinants become zero this original determinant is the same as a1 b1 c1 c3 yes on now this operation essentially what is it that i have done you know in this operation this is column c1 say column c1 i have performed an operation on column c1 say so this was my column c1 this was my column c1 what is it that i do i took c1 of this
I took C1 of this. How did I get from here to there? I took the first column of this. To the first column, I added K times the second column, right? KB1, KB2, KB3. This is what I did, right? I added K times the second column and then K prime times the third column. K prime times the third column. That's the operation that I have performed. That's the operation that I have performed on C1. Right? The value of the determinant will remain the same. That means you could have in a given determinant, in a given determinant, you could have taken any column. And to that column, you know, you could have added members, some three times members of the second column and four times members of the third column to obtain the new determinant. It's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. Now, whatever I've done of columns, I could have set off rows also. That means if this was my first row, to the first row, I could have said, all right, row one to be replaced by R1 plus five times R2, for example. The value of the determinant will remain the same. That means if the first row changes to A1 plus 5A2, B1 plus 5B2, C1 plus 5C2, the value of the determinant will remain the same, right? This is, so now this you do out of inspection. There are times when a determinant looks horrendous, but uh, your your flexibility to carry out row column manipulations of this kind will make the numbers look less bulkier and easier to compute, right? <coughs> now, say, refer to this bunch of problems. <coughs> say, I had this determinant, 1 part 1 we had this determinant 17 58 97 19 60 99 18 59 98 i want to compute the value of this determinant <coughs> what i do is I do row 1 minus row 2, right? So if I do a row 1 minus row 2, these elements will become 1, 1, 1, right? That's the first operation that I've performed. Row 1 to be replaced by row 1 minus row 3. Row 1 minus row 3. This is row 1 and this is row 3. So on row 1, I've done row 1 minus row 3. 19 minus 80, 60 minus 59, 99 minus 98, right? So the this row becomes this, right? To row 3, then I do a row 3 minus row 1. I'm sorry, this is row 2. This is row 2. I'm so sorry, this is row 2. Row 2. To row 2, I did a row 2 minus row 1. To row 2, I did a row 2 minus row 1. Similarly, to row 3, which is this row, I could do a row 3 minus row 1. Row 3 minus row 1. Row 3 minus row 1 means this will be 1, 1, and 1. I could have done this. So to row 2, I did a row 2 minus row 1. 1, 1, 1. And then to row 3, I did like a row 3 minus row 1. Row 3 minus row 1. So I get 1, 1, 1. And then this is like 17, 58, 97. The second and the third rows become identical. The determinant must be 0. The determinant must be 0. Right? Hmm? Now, you know, <coughs> the members of the determinant could be rational integral functions of x. Hmm? They could be, say, polynomials in x. They could be rational integral functions of x. So, you know, these elements a1, b1, c1, say all these elements, the ai's are all functions of x, rational integral functions of x, that means powers of x are 
integers right the bi's are also rational integral functions of x and ci's are also rational integral functions of x they are also rational integral functions of x all members say are rational integral functions of x say in general say polynomials in x hmm. now if on plugging in delta a function of x then delta would be a function of x if on plugging x equal to alpha in the determinant if on plugging in x equal to alpha in the determinant two rows or columns two rows or two columns become identical then x minus alpha must be a factor of the determinant this is a function of x if in this on plugging in x equal to alpha if you find that two rows or two columns are becoming identical that means the determinant must be becoming zero at x equal to alpha and when would the determinant become zero at x equal to alpha if x minus alpha is a factor of the determinant yes or no hmm? so on plugging in x equal to alpha if two rows or columns become identical then x minus alpha must be a factor of the determinant and in a very general sense in a determinant of order n in a determinant of order n that means n rows and n columns on plugging in x equal to alpha if r rows or r columns become identical if r rows or r columns become identical then x minus alpha to power r minus 1 will be a factor of the determinant if on plugging in x equal to alpha in general if on plugging in x equal to alpha in general r rows or r columns become identical r rows or r columns become identical then x minus alpha to power r minus 1 x minus alpha to power r minus 1 would be a factor of the determinant would be a factor of the determinant then you can't say anything then one thing if a rows become identical say then x minus alpha to power a minus 1 would be a factor right now if b columns are becoming identical then x minus alpha to power b minus 1 would be a factor now whether it depends on a is bigger or b is bigger right so if a is bigger then x minus alpha to power b minus 1 would be a factor of the determinant if a is bigger because the smaller number of factors would be factors isn't it hmm so we can't say we can't say for sure now <clears throat> no it does not matter actually we can't say you right we can't say anything in the sense that no generalization can be made on this x minus alpha to power i mean you can't say that x minus alpha to power a plus b minus 1 will be a factor that cannot be said if that is i think that is where you were heading to that cannot be said no yes yes bigger one for sure x minus a to power b minus alpha to power a minus 1 will be a factor if a is bigger that for sure will be a factor 
Absolutely. I mean, if A is 4 and B is 3, then X minus alpha to power 3 has to be a factor because, you know, that you can get straight out of the 4 rows. That you can straight get out of the 4 rows. Stand corrected. Yes. <coughs> okay. So far, so good, right? which was the property I said you could take any row and carry out a manipulation with the uh, remaining rows which was the property that I, I used that property only in the sense say this was row 1 this was row 2 set of elements set of elements this was row 3 in a determinant right this determinant would be the same as changing the row 1 to say c1 times plus say c2 times row 3 that's this is what it means any row can be replaced by the row plus some constant times any other row elements of that row plus c2 times elements of the third row in the sense that if i have a determinant say a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Suppose this is a determinant, right? So A can be re A, B, C can be replaced by, for example, you know, I could have written A plus 4D plus 5G, B plus 4E plus 5B, C plus 4F plus 5I. The first row could have been replaced by elements of this kind. And then the second and the third rows remain the same. Row 1 can be replaced by, let's say, 4 times members of the second row plus, say, 5 times members of the third row. 5G, 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 5B, 5I, B prime. This is what I mean, right? Are you are you unsure of that property? Hmm? <coughs> now, for example. Look at this second problem. Let me simplify this determinant. Let's simplify this determinant. So what I try and do is, I identify a row in which I try to make maximum number of elements as 0 and then expand about that row or that column. This is what the ambition is, right? So what I could have done is, in this, column 2 could have been replaced by column 2 minus column 1, then this will become 0. Column 3 could have been replaced by column 3 minus column 1, then this will become 0. So these two members will become 0 and then I can expand about the first row. Yes or no? You know what I am saying? Hmm? So, these are the two operations that I am going to perform. Column 2 to be replaced by column 2 minus column 1. Column 3 to be replaced by column 3 minus column 1. So that these two members become 0. So this becomes x cubed <coughs> 0, y minus x, y cube minus x cube, right? Then column 3 to be replaced by this minus this, 0, z minus x, and z cube minus x cube. 
these two operations I have performed. C2 replaced by C2 minus C1, C3 replaced by C3 minus C1. This is what transpires, right? Now I expand about the first row because the co realize that zero into cofactor of this will be zero, zero into cofactor of this will be zero. So there would be only a term associated with this member in the expansion of this determinant. So this is going to be one into this into this minus this into this. Yes or no? Clear? You could have taken y minus x and z minus x common from this. Let me just tell you the final result that will come out of this. This will be x minus y into y minus z into z minus x into x plus y plus z. This would be the final result. By taking y minus x and z minus x common from this. This would be the result. Very clearly, <coughs> if x plus y plus z is 0, if x plus y plus z is 0, this determinant turns out to be 0. And obviously, by inspection, I could have said, on plugging in x equal to y, do you realize that the first two rows are becoming identical, uh, the, the first two columns are becoming identical? So, x minus y must be a factor. On plugging in y equal to z, the second and the third columns are becoming identical. So y minus z must be a factor. And similarly, on plugging in x equal to z, the first column and the third column are becoming identical. So x minus z must be a factor, com which is what emerges out of this computation. Yes or no? Hmm? Let me <laughs> illustrate a little more. <clears throat> say one part four without expanding we want to show b c a a squared c squared equals 1 a squared a cubed without expansion we want to show this see again <coughs> what I do is I multiply by a so that this becomes a squared and a cubed a squared and a cubed so, I, when I multiply the first row by a, this becomes a squared and a cube. So, I must divide the determinant by a, so that 1 by a when multiplied balances the first row, right? Right? 1 by a when multiplied with the first row will give me b, c, a and a squared, the original members of the first row, yes or no? Right? Similarly, the second row I multiply with b, so that I could get b squared, b cubed. But then I need to divide by b. So that 1 by b into this maintains the original members of the first of the second row, right? Similarly, into 1 by c. Yes or no? And then from the first column, I could have taken abc common. So if from the first member, I take abc common. First column, I take abc common. abc by abc. 1, 1, 1 a squared, b squared, c squared, I end up getting the right hand side. Yes or no? Hmm? Let me illustrate a little more. Can I wipe this off? <coughs> Four part B. <coughs> mm. 
without expanding i want to show that this is zero without expanding i want to show that this is zero now from the property that we have just learned this delta is 1a a squared minus 1 a b c <coughs> a b right yes or no hmm? <coughs> now so say this is delta 1 minus delta 2 this is delta 1 and this is delta 2 let me manipulate delta 2 and see if I can make it equal to delta 1 by suitable manipulations. Hmm? <coughs> Obviously, you know, I need a and a squared, so I multiply the first row by a. So this will become a, a squared, this will become a, b, c. I'll eventually divide it by a also. Then the second row by b, b squared, this will become a, b, c. I divide by b. Then c, c squared, a, b, c. I'll divide by c. This is what happens. And then I take a, b, c common. So that a, b, c into this, a, b, c will cancel off. a, b, c common from the third column. So this will become a, a squared 1, b, b squared 1, c, c squared 1. This is what I get on taking a, b, c common, we will cancel this a, b, c. Now, realize that uh, I need to, I carry out this. I bring this column, column 3 to column 1 and column 1 to column 3. The sign of the determinant will change. Right? Hmm? But <coughs> nevertheless, so <coughs> this will be minus of 1, 1, 1, a squared, b squared, c squared, a, b, c. Right? I have interchanged the first and the third columns. The sign will change. Now what I do is I interchange these two. The sign will again change. So minus of this means plus. So the sign again changes on interchanging the second and the third column. So this will become 1, 1, 1, A, B, C, A squared, B squared, C squared, which is the same as delta 1, which is the same as delta 1. So delta 2 is the same as delta 1. Therefore, this determinant must be 0. This determinant must be 0. Right? Hmm? <coughs> Now, again, look at part 5 where I need to solve for x. Can I wipe this off? I want to solve for x. I want to solve for x. So one thing for sure, it's a cubic polynomial, isn't it? When you expand about the first row, you realize that the highest power of x is 3. So how many roots will it have in general? 3 roots. It's a cubic polynomial, so it's going to have 3 roots. Now one thing, Few things by inspection, 
few things by inspection first. Hmm? If you plug in x equal to b for example, then row 1 becomes identical to row 2. Yes or no? On plugging in x equal to b, the first two rows will become identical. That means for this delta, x minus b must be a factor of delta. x minus b must be a factor of delta. Yes or no? Right? On plugging in x equal to c, row 1 becomes identical to row 3, which means x minus c must be a factor of delta. That means for sure x minus b and x minus c are factors of delta. So delta would be something into x minus b into x minus c for sure. And this equal to 0 means b and c for sure are two roots of this. b and c for sure are two roots. I have to evaluate the third root. So b and c can be so easily obtained by inspection, the two roots. Now the third root. What I do is, <coughs> this determinant I could have written as minus I could have done this, right? This equal to 0. Hmm? <coughs> now notice that from the second first column of this, I could have taken a cubed common. If I took a cubed common from this, this would become 1, 1, 1. 1. Okay. Now from this, I could have taken x common from the first row. So this will become x squared, x and 1, right? I could have taken b common from the second row, b. So this will become b squared, b and 1, yes or no? I could have taken c common from the third row. So this would become c squared, c and 1, yes or no? Hmm? Now, notice, this determinant and this determinant are the same. Because I do this, bring this here and bring this here, right? And then I interchange these two and then I interchange these two. I get this, right? I interchange first interchange the first and the third column and then the second and the third column, I will get this determinant. So do you realize this determinant is the same as this determinant? Yes or no? What? No? So, which means if this determinant is delta 1, then this determinant will also be delta 1. So, which means x b c minus a cubed into delta 1 is the original delta. That means 1, the third root would be a cubed by b c. Because if this is 0, then the third root turns out to be a cubed by b c. Yes or no? So, the three roots of delta are b, c and this will give me, this equal to 0 will give me a cube by b, c, the third row, the, the third root, the third root of this determinant will be a cube by b, c, yes or no? Hmm? <coughs> sum 
common determinants 1 1 1 a b c <coughs> a square b squared c squared you would be able to prove <coughs> this you want to remember <coughs> into yeah that's it <coughs> That's another determinant you want to remember. You and I want you to prove this also independently, right? You could do manipulations on the second and the third column, make it to zero like I did before, and uh, do the neat proof. sorry this has to be a plus b plus c i'll tell you why i just did this a little while ago this has to be a plus b plus c right <coughs> now even otherwise you know <coughs> reason i thought this was wrong the moment i wrote ab because see this is degree 1 degree 1 degree 1 degree 3 and if this was ab this would have become degree nay 3 and 2 5 Five, but see, the highest degree here is four. B C cubed, B cube C. All members here are degree four, right? So if this was A B plus B C plus C A, this would have become three and two five. That's not possible. It should be three and one, four degree four. So, you know what I'm saying? Hmm? So that that's the reason I thought I what I wrote was wrong. <coughs> Then this one 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 A square B square C square A cube B cube C cube. Now this is this is degree five, B squared C cube. some of the powers add up to 5 so this is degree 5 this member is going to be and now you will have ab plus bc plus c this is degree 5 1 1 1 3 and 2 5 that would be this determinant this determinant will be equal to this <coughs> i want you to remember this and also be able to prove this another determinant which is a cyclic determinant which appears very often is the following this is a cyclic determinant A B C B C A C A B same cyclic order same cyclic order. Hmm? Now to obtain this determinant, what you could have done is row one to be replaced by row one plus row two plus row three. Row one to be replaced by row one plus row two plus row three. Why? Because if I read this, this will become a plus b plus c. This will become a plus b plus c. This will also become a plus b plus c. And then I could have taken a plus b plus c. common from this right so if i did this this is what happens and then on taking a plus b plus c common this and then if i want to expand about the first row i would try and make two elements zero here then i'll do a this minus this and this minus this right
so I did like a do you understand what I did c2 minus c1 and c3 minus c1 is what I now I can expand about the first row 1 into this into this would be the only thing that I'll get minus this into this 1 into this into this minus this into this if you read that you end up getting minus of <coughs> This is what you'll get. Have you seen this expression before? What is it? Plus c cubed minus 3abc minus 3abc. So this is minus of <coughs> from this step. Okay, so I, this is my column 2, this is my column 3, and this is my column 1, right? So what I did was, to C2, I said C2 minus C1, right? So 1 minus 1, C minus B, A minus C, right? And then to column C3, this is C3, I did like a C3 minus C1. So C3 minus C1, so this became 1 minus 1, a minus B and B minus C, right? So I get that. And now I expand about the first row. So I get A plus B plus C, 1 into this into this minus this into this because the other two members is, will be 0, right? And when you do that, you will get something like this. Hmm? And you want to remember this. A plus B plus C into A squared plus B squared plus C squared minus summation AB is a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3abc. When you multiply this out, you will get a minus outside it, if you do that. Hmm. What this? No, not this, not all of this. <laughs> Good question. I can only give you a bad answer for this. <laughs> So, it's like, you know, when you go ahead and teach a nursery kid who you are teaching just the alphabets A, B, C, D, and then using A, you end up telling him 500 different words you can maybe. Then he asks you <laughs> the same question. Will you have an answer? I mean, this of course, so many of these things which I realize, you know, you kids don't know even after you come to 11. So I make sure I end up teaching all of this to, to, to my son who's in class 8. So that you know, when he comes to 11, no one tells him, no one ever taught you this. <laughs> but I know most of you, you know, would, may not have seen A cube plus B cube plus C cube minus 3 A B C or maybe I would have seen it sketchily here and there and don't remember this. But I make sure that I uh, have, I, I actually made my son derive this uh, in the previous previous week. I said, don't start with this and multiply and show me this. I said, start with this and show me that. Now that, that again is not difficult. Can you do that? Can you factorize AQ plus BQ plus CQ minus 3ABC into this? <laughs> you look tentative, <laughs> little unsure. Salaki yaki board petone bull leg a karia. Bull to the hakar sakte. So the, the little fellow was, you know, sulking. He said, No, when I can just multiply this out, why should I? I said, No, you were given this. You were not given this equal to this. So you were given this, and I said, Factorize this. So he took almost two hours to do that, but or maybe more. But eventually, at the end of it, he said, Aaj aur nahi padenge. <laughs> Can I wipe this off? The 
tragedy is class 7 8 9 10 they teach you the same things i can't understand beyond my imagination i mean and you know i had forgotten all about you know what they teach in these junior classes only the recent years that i came to know the goddamn thing you know he did this in 7 he's doing this in 8 and i saw that class 9 book <laughs> same goddamn shit in class 9 same goddamn shit what new things do you learn such a wastage of time in fact you know what you guys do in 9 10 in singapore they do in class 5 they do in class 5 that's the difference huh <laughs> okay so far so good right now <coughs> multiplication of two determinants multiplication of two determinants you will multiply determinants of the same order. You will not multiply a determinant of order 2 with a determinant of order 3. 3 with 3, 4 with 4, 5 with 5. Right? Now. <coughs> Suppose there is a determinant A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, a3, B3, C3 and you multiply it with a determinant alpha 1, beta 1, gamma 1 you want to multiply these two determinants hmm? now one way, there are many ways you could multiply two determinants. One way is what they called row by row. Hmm? So, I'm, when I multiply two 3 by 3 determinants, I will get a determinant which is also 3 by 3. Hmm? This determinant has the following elements. So, it will have a first element which is obtained. What you do is, you take the first row of this and the first row of this. Find the sum of the product of the corresponding elements. A1 alpha 1 plus B1 beta 1 plus C1 gamma 1. That will stand here. Gamma 1. Now, the next member of the first row, the next member of the first row. You maintain this, you maintain this and multiply it with elements of this row. That means now you do the following. A1 alpha 2 plus B1 beta 2 plus C1 gamma 2. This row with this row now. Now the third member here. This row with this row. So various members, the three members of the first row are obtained. What did I do? This with this. Then the second member this with this. The third member this with this. That's how the three members of the first row are obtained. Now, I, I now want to be able to obtain members of the second row. So, I forget this. I pivot around this. Hmm. I'll do this with this, then this with this, and then this with this. This is what I'll do. Hmm? So, this will give me like a A2 alpha 1 plus B2 beta 1 plus <coughs> C2 gamma 1 and then this with this A2 alpha 2 plus B2 beta 2 
plus C2 gamma 2. Similarly, <coughs> this with this, A2 alpha 3 plus B2 beta 3 plus C2 gamma 3. Then members of the third row, I forget this. And I do this. <coughs> this with this, and then this with this, and then this with this. This is what I do. <coughs> Gamma 2. And then this with this. This is one form of multiplication. But realize that I could have converted these columns into rows. That means I could have done a row by column multiplication also. I could do a row by row. I could have done a row by column. I could have done a column by column. I could have done a column by row. All of that will give me the same value of delta. This determinant actually when you expand into several singular determinants, you know, with single elements, uh, then you will 9, 3 is 27. You will get 27 determinants when you expand this. You know, using the rule of expanding the determinant, for example, this determinant, this, and then this, and then this, and so on and so forth, you will get 27 determinants of which 21 would be identically 0. 21 would be identically 0. And 6 would be non-zero determinants in this. You might want to evaluate this yourself. <laughs> so, Joe, hmm. 27 of these would be identically 0 and you will be eventually left with 6 non-zero determinants. <coughs> that's right, that's the reason I have said all that. <laughs> that's how I computed these numbers. <coughs> you will get 27 determinants. 21 would turn out to be identically 0 because they'll have rows or columns identical, two rows or two columns identical, and 6 would be non-zero determinants when you expand this. This is what would happen. <coughs> and like I said, you could do row by row, row by column, column by row, column by column. Any form is acceptable. This I have done row by row. Now, suppose I have a determinant delta. Right? Suppose this is a determinant delta. Let me look at the determinant of its cofactors. Determinant of its cofactors is hmm. Now let me multiply the two determinants, delta into delta prime, where delta prime is the determinant of the cofactors of delta. <laughs> now, if I take the first row and multiply it with these elements, what will I get? Delta. I will get delta, isn't it? A1, A1, B1, B1, C1, C1, I will get delta. But now if I take the first row and go to the second row of this, I will get 0. First row and third row, 0. Determinant of one row but cofactors of some other row will give me 0. Then I come to this. These 
with these will give me zero these with these will give me delta will give me delta these with these will give me zero similarly third row first row zero then zero and then delta that's what i get hmm? yes or no do you realize this will give me zero delta delta into delta delta cubed is what i get this is delta cubed delta delta prime is delta cube so delta prime determinant of the cofactors is delta squared yes or no determinant of the cofactors will be delta squared in fact i can generalize this write down if delta be the determinant of order n this is order 3 right if delta be a determinant of order n <clears throat> and delta prime and delta prime be the adjoint of that determinant that means determinant of its cofactors then what you would get is when you multiply delta into delta prime then the diagonal elements will all be delta others would be zero so if it's a n by n determinant then delta into delta into delta delta to power n is what you will get will be delta to power n for a determinant of order n so the determinant of the cofactors of delta would be delta to power n minus 1 for order 3 put n equal to 3 delta prime will become delta squared right so the determinant of the cofactors of a determinant of order n will be the determinant to power n minus 1 do you realize whatever i've done here right when you multiply these two you will get all diagonal elements as delta so delta into delta into delta delta to power n which is the right hand side this is what you'll get of which this is a special case are you all there with me hmm? <coughs> Now, <clears throat> if I have a determinant, if I have a determinant whose i jth element, that means the element in the ith row and the jth column, is the same as the element in the jth row and the ith column that means first row and third column will have the same element as third row and first column if the ijth element is the same as jith element then the determinant is called a symmetric determinant symmetric determinant have you seen a symmetric determinant pair of straight lines this is a11 of course it will be equal to a11 always this is a12 which is the same as a21 a13 which is the same as a31 a 2, 3, which is the same as A, 3, 2. Is this not a symmetric determinant? Right? This is a symmetric determinant. And in this determinant, if columns are written as rows, nothing will change in the looks of the determinant. See, this is the first column. It's identical to the, this is the first row. It's identical to the first column. This is the second row, HBF, identical to the second column, HBF. This is the third row, GFC. It's identical to the third column. That means if you convert rows into columns and columns into rows, then the looks of the determinant will not change. 
the value of delta anyways whether symmetric or not will not change but even the looks of the determinant cosmetic looks of the determinant will remain unaltered if the determinant is symmetric right and when you convert rows into columns and columns into rows that operation is called transposition is called transposition you transpose the members of those of the determinant <coughs> Uh, by the way, do you remember the value of this? Hey, Khan, kya bolay? That's the value of this determinant. Hey, there are uh, only five terms here. Why? This should have been six terms, right? Yeah, because FGH has appeared twice here. FGH plus FGH. <coughs> if you can remember this also. <laughs> we'll do that. That's the application which is Kramer's rule, etc. I'm going to do that also. That's the reason we are doing all this. Right? <coughs> so that's the symmetric determinant. In fact, write down the write down the determinant of cofactors the determinant of cofactors of a symmetric determinant of a symmetric determinant will also be symmetric, will also be symmetric, 1, <coughs> 2 and you can check that, you can check that. For example, you know this determinant, find the determinant of its cofactors, you will find that that is going to be symmetric, 2. If any two determinants that are identical are multiplied, if any two identical determinants are multiplied, symmetric or not, symmetric or not, the result, the result will always be a symmetric determinant. The result will always be a symmetric determinant. even if two determinants are not symmetric. That means when you are squaring a determinant, multiplying a determinant by itself, whether that mother determinant is symmetric or not, on squaring a determinant, you will always get a symmetric determinant. You can check that for yourself. <coughs> Multiply A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3 with A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3, you will find that you will get a symmetric determinant. Hmm. Hmm? That cannot be said that cannot be said. Now we also have what is called a skew symmetric determinant. Skew symmetric determinant. If a i j is minus a j i, then the determinant is a skew symmetric determinant. If a i j is minus a j i, then the determinant is a skew symmetric determinant. So now as a special case, the diagonal elements would have i equal to j, isn't it? a 1 1 will be a diagonal element, a 2 2 will be a diagonal element, a 3 3 will be a diagonal element, right? So if you plug in i equal to j, you will get diagonal elements. So plug in i equal to j, that means we are talking of the diagonal elements of the determinant. Then a 1 a i i is the same as minus a i i. Yes, so a i i will be zeros. That means all diagonal elements in a skew symmetric determinant will be zero. All diagonal elements in a skew symmetric determinant will be zero. Hmm? 
now so <coughs> say 0 0 0 I'm talking of a skew symmetric determinant say this is a this is B this will be minus a minus B say this is C this is minus C do you realize it's a skew symmetric determinant 0 0 0 this is a 1 2 this is minus a 2 1 this is a 1 3 this is minus a 3 1 and so on so forth right this is a 2 3 which is minus a 3 2 this is a skew symmetric determinant yes or no delta now <coughs> what I do is I take minus common from the first row minus common from the second row and minus common from the third row so I take minus one cubed common hmm? Hey, this determinant is obtained from this determinant simply by converting rows into columns and columns into rows. So if this is delta, then this will also be delta. Yes or no? Hmm? So this turns out to be minus delta. So delta is 0. Does it mean that every skew symmetric determinant is 0? A skew symmetric determinant of an odd order will always be 0. Write down. This is an odd order, right? Order 3? Write down. A skew symmetric determinant of an odd order will always be 0. A skew symmetric determinant of an odd order will always be 0. Whereas, a skew symmetric determinant of an even order will be a perfect square. A skew symmetric determinant of an even order will be a perfect square. In a sense, say 0, 0, A minus A. This is a skew symmetric determinant of even order. Isn't it? Order 2, it's skew symmetric. It's A square. This is what I mean. Loosely speaking, this is what it means. Isn't it? 